Hi, and welcome to Lunchtime Prayer Power. I'm Deidre Banks. Today we're praying for families, and we're believing God for parents to raise up godly children and teach them in the way of the Lord day and night. We want to believe God to raise up godly children in our families and to help the parents in our communities to train up their children. And again, there may be children who are saved. They're saved because maybe an evangelist at their school is teaching them and sharing the gospel. And so their parents aren't saved. And God's raising up that child to save the family. That's the importance of the church as well. Because children, a lot of times, their parents are saved. They'll tell their parents, hey, I want to go to church. And then that can draw in the parent. And the church can help the child grow and learn in the word where the parent may not know the word. So the church is a great resource, as well as we at home, if we are saved parents, we want to be teaching the word. Some parents may not be saved, but you know the importance of teaching your child the word and continue to study the word with them. And then God can shine a light and encounter you with his love. You may have grown up in the church and, and fallen away. You may not see the importance of that anymore uh, as far as being a believer, but you know the power of the word. Continue to stay in the word, and God's going to show you the importance of that power because we need salvation. That's how we enter in. That is the only way. The way, the truth, and the life is Jesus Christ, and he's the only way. So don't fall for this people of God for the deceptions of false religions. They are false. We love everybody, and so we want to respect and honor one another. We don't want to argue with others, but we want our life to shine but I want you to know the truth about the gospel that Jesus Christ is the only way and it's up to us believers to pray so let's begin to pray we're going to begin to pray in just a moment here I want to share with you a couple of scriptures that encourage us about teaching our children the word of God Proverbs 22 and 6 says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it we're also warned as fathers not to provoke our children to anger Ephesians 6 and 4 fathers do not exasperate your children instead bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord we know the importance of the Lord and the law of God that we should meditate it on it day and night and will be successful Joshua 1 and 8 this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success we also know that in Deuteronomy the children of Israel were instructed to stay diligently in the word and to teach that to their children Deuteronomy 6 7 through 9 you shall teach them diligently to your children and you shall walk, talk of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way when you lie down and when you rise up you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So the word of God is important. We know that it's sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing between the soul and the spirit, the joint and the marrow. Amen. So we want to wield our sword rightly, and we want to teach our children in our communities to do that. I want to encourage, if you have the opportunity where a parent who's an unbeliever is willing to let you to teach the children, that's an awesome thing as the Lord leads. But teaching doesn't always have to be formal. You could have an opportunity to just speak a word of encouragement to the child as the parent permits. You want to, you know, follow if, if they're allowing you to do that. You know, if you see them, Holy Spirit leads you to say something nice. You don't have to necessarily ask for permission for that, but to be really stewarding them. You know, the Holy Spirit may give you an opportunity. God may give you an opportunity. You may have a children's ministry to raise up other children warriors, but seek the Lord and ask him if he's leading you into that. Seek the Lord in this hour like never before to make sure you're doing the work of the Lord. It doesn't mean that you have to leave your job. Not everyone's called out of the marketplace. Many are called to be in the business world because you're a light there, but some are called to leave. You know, I was called to leave several years ago in 2018. I'd been working in accounting in many years. I had my master's in tax and I was a licensed CPA at that time. And, you know, God had spoken to me for years. I knew I was going to go at some point to full-time ministry. And I told my husband that that's important. Before we got married, he knew the call in my life. He knew that at some point I was going to go into full-time ministry and he was okay with that. And that was important for me because I needed the support. I needed to know, you know, this is, you know, God called me to be married to this person and they're going to support what the call of God in my life. And likewise, I support the call of God in his life. And God has blessed us. So in 2018, I was making a six-figure salary and I left that 
to go into full-time ministry and I've never looked back and it's 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 awesome I love what I do I love the Lord and I love being able to encourage people through prayer and the word of God to live prosperous victorious lives for the work of the Lord we're victorious because we want to advance the kingdom it's not just for us but it's to advance the kingdom of God we're prosperous because we need to do the work of the Lord it's not just for us yes we're blessed but we're blessed to be a blessing so it's for us to do the work of the Lord amen it's not prosperity gospel it's to do the work of the Lord and be blessed. And then that's a blessing in and of itself to be able to do the work of the Lord and to be able to bless others. Amen. So we have talked about the importance of the word of God. We're going to spend a couple minutes today praying. So I want to encourage you to pray during your lunch hour, to seek the Lord during this time and take some time away. Even if you need to go into your car, uh, that's an opportunity for you. You can ask your job if they have designated places for you to pray because several of them do. Uh, in order to accommodate the religious requirements of other people. But all right, let's begin in prayer. Lord, we, we bless you. We thank you, Father God. We just press into you more and more on today. We press into your presence, Lord. More of you and less of us. We want to decrease so you can increase. Overflow in this place. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Pour out your anointing, Father God. Pour out your power, Lord. Pour out your power in this hour, Father God, that we may press into you in a mightier way, that we may receive from you. We want to be successful in all that we do. We want to rest in your word. And we don't want to be successful so that we can promote ourselves, but so we can advance the kingdom of God. Help us, Father God, and remove any ill will or any improper motives within us because we know that to one's own self, all their ways seem good. Their ways seem right. But Father God, you weigh the heart. So we want to have you circumcise our heart in this hour. Purify our hearts, Lord. Remove anything that's not like you in this time and help us Lord to raise up godly children in this hour not just those of us that are believers but we're praying for the churches right now Father God also to raise up godly children that we're teaching the children Lord you've given us such a mighty call and a work in this hour to raise up children Lord those that are stewarding churches in this hour those that are stewarding small groups it's such an honor and a privilege Lord help us to take it seriously yes there's a time for entertainment we can learn a lot through games but help us right now Father God not to be Uh, displaying lastidaisicalness. Help us, Lord, to steward it correctly. We pray for every small group leader who's operating in a parenting role in that hour because they're teaching the children. We pray for every minister of the gospel who's working with children right now, Father God. Give them greater power, greater anointing, greater... A furtherance, greater saltiness right now, Father God. They will not lose their flavor, not lose their fervor, Lord. Give them more fervor. Help them not to get weary while doing because they're seeing things that can be discouraging. Help them to keep their eye on you and not to despise the church, not to despise the children, but give them a fervor, give them a wherewithal, give them a hunger and thirst for you, Lord, that in this hour they're hungering and thirst for righteousness. Help them to train up the children in a place of a parent because they're operating in that capacity in those moments where they're leading the children, where some of them even discipline the children in their goals. We also pray for their natural parents. And for those that are teaching and training and for grandparents too, some grandparents are stepping in to train the children because the parent doesn't know the Lord or maybe the parent needs help. So we pray for the grandparents as well. Pray for them, Father God. We pray that they have grace, Lord. We pray for the parents that they are teaching the word of God to their children diligently, that they're getting up in the morning and training the children and at night, that they're helping the children, they're teaching them how to meditate on the word, they're teaching the children the scripture and the full gospel, not just parts of the gospel, but the full gospel, Lord, and not adding to it, Lord, or taking away from it, Father God, but that they're teaching the children the way of the Lord and they're admonishing you, Father God. I mean, rather, they're admonishing their children. We pray, Lord, that they will continue to operate in your power and your capacity. Give the parents more grace to teach the children. Some are getting weary because they're seeing the way that the children are acting outside the home, Lord. But we pray for encouragement because your word tells us if we train the children in the way that they should go when they're old, they will not depart from it. So we pray right now, Father God, and we know that your word is true. It is binding and it is sharper than a two-edged sword. And you are not ignoring the oaths that you've given us in scripture or the promises, Lord. When we do our part, you do your part. So help us, Father God, to train them, to train them, and to train them is more than just reading and glossing over scripture, Lord, but help us to really train them as a, uh, people are trained for battle in the army. They're not just going into one fight and they're saying it's one and done. They're yielding their soul daily. They're putting on their full armor. They're putting on their fatigues daily. They're getting up and they're warring and they're strengthening and they're training daily. So help us, Father God, to train our children as they're going into war because it is an epic battle for souls to be won in the harvest field. 
So help us right now, Father God, to continue to train up the children. And Lord, we know that we will see fruits from our labor because you're God who desires fruit and you're a fruitful God. You told Eve and Adam to be fruitful and multiply. And you said in your word in Genesis that fruit bears after its own kind. So if we sow seeds of discord, we'll reap seeds of discord. But if we sow seeds of love, we'll reap seeds of love. If we sow seeds to the word and to your kingdom, Lord, we were going to reap a harvest. So we thank you right now, Father God. Help us to sow to your kingdom because we will have eternal rewards. Help us to sow to those things that are not going to fade away because these earthly treasures are going to pass away. Moss can eat them and destroy just as we see in times past where people stored up earthly treasures and they're gone. They were plundered and stolen. But Lord, when we store up treasures in heaven where moths cannot destroy, where the enemy cannot get in, we thank you, Father God, that there, we're going to reap an eternal harvest, eternal reward. So help us right now, Father God, to press into this and raise up these children mightily warriors, warriors who prepared for battle, little Holy Ghost warriors who are fighting even now, who are pressing in now, who are on the battlefields at their school, some of them even workers, the teenagers working, and some even younger ones working for their families. We pray for them right now, strength and wholeness, restoration. They're on their knees, some of them praying right now for their families to be restored. They may be the only one praying, Lord, but we know that you see them. You hear their prayers. You're hearkening to their voice, Lord, as they're praying according to your Holy Spirit, according to the word of God. Help them to war victoriously because they will be victorious in battle because thanks be God who always leads us into triumph. They're more than conquerors through him who loved us. So we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this hour with these children. They're precious. Help us, Lord, to train them up correctly. Remove any false doctrine from them. Break off the deception from these children. So help us to teach the children to walk in love, but also to walk in wisdom. To walk in love, but not to tolerate darkness. To walk in love and not to be mean and and bully others, but to know the truth. Help the Lord to have grace and truth, because Jesus was full of grace and truth. Help them have both, Father God. Help us to teach them and train them in the way that they should go. Equip the churches, Father God, through the fivefold ministers and through your word and through your Holy Spirit to do the work that you called us to do. Rise up, church. Rise up, church, in this hour, says the Lord. Oh, Jesus, help us, Father God, to walk in your calling, to walk in your purposes in this hour, Lord. Because you're telling the churches to rise up victoriously in battle, to rise up for souls, to rise up, to build, to build, to build. You're telling your church to build in this hour, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, for your Holy Ghost instructions. We honor your word and we submit to your instructions in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you guys. I love you with the love of the Lord. Continue to war during your lunch hour. To pray, to build up in your most holy faith. Pray in tongues. If you're a believer who has your spiritual language, pray in the spirit through your tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, but you you have the Holy Spirit, you can pray in your natural language and still pray Holy Spirit-inspired prayers. But pray, pray, pray. Pray without ceasing. It's a time to pray like never before. God bless you.